This week on NSFW, we are joined by Tom Merritt. We discuss the impending big news about Harry Potter 8, spoilers, and the summer music series. It's all coming up on this edition of NSFW. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for NSFW is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is NSFW episode 177, recorded on May 7th, 2013. Hey, Jafar! This episode of NSFW is brought to you by Tonks Coffee. Tonks offers a bi weekly subscription. Tonks sources their beans directly from the growers. They're roasted and shipped within 24 hours, giving you the freshest coffee beans in the world. For a free sample, visit tonks.org slash NSFW. That's T O N X dot O R G slash NSFW. And Pro XPN. Pro XPN is a virtual private network that allows you to use the internet the way it should be anonymous and unfiltered. For 20% off your new account, go to proxpn.com slash twit and use the code NSFW. <laughs> Shutterstock.com. With over 900,000 high quality video clips, Shutterstock helps you take your creative project to the next level. For 30% off your new account, go to shutterstock.com and use offer code NSFW5. Yeah, yeah. О, не режь меня, прошу, пожалуйста. О, 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 пожалуйста. Не режь меня. It's good enough for me. Let's go ahead and start this thing. All right, it is go time. For NSFW, the new show full of wind, the new sauce for the webernets, the show that is nominally safe for work. You know the one I'm talking about. I'm talking about the one that's the home two for the second week, the number one best-selling comedy album in the United States according to the Billboard charts. It's NSFW. I'm Brian Brushwood, joined as always by my inimitable co-host, always cheerful, always jubilant. It's Justin Robert Young. What's going on, JRY? Yeah, suck it, Steve Allen. <laughs> Put it right in your butt. That's what I say to that. Everybody else who has ever had a comedy album, we're the boss now. <laughs> Check out this tin star we got on our chest metaphorically. We're the boss. It took me a second to realize what you were talking about because I thought, uh, oh, that's not you at all. I thought uh, that you were like harping on the Russian fish that was singing there at the at the end, which, uh, by the why, way, all the- why would I harp? Is the name Steve Allen? I didn't know. That's why I was confused. I was like, what did that fish ever do to you? And how did you know his name was Steve? I'll tell you what, the world may never know. You want to know who will know? The man who is in the know when it comes to tech news every single day. He is the best man in the history of the world. He not only hosts a show with Brian Framerate, but he hosts a show with me, FSL Tonight. Tom Merritt. Huzzah! Привет. Мне нравится fish video. <laughs> Did you, do you know what the fish is singing on that? It said please and prosciu, uh, and I didn't, I didn't catch that. Probably, probably please don't eat me or... Yeah, I don't know. No, it's just kind of like, hello, please. I'm the fish. I don't know. Пожалуйста. Пожалуйста. What does that mean? Пожалуйста means please. Sometimes it can mean hi. Please, hi. Hi, how's it going? I'm a fish who's dying. How does that make the cut for opening video, for the record? Uh, well, the polite this is what happens you. When, you, when, you don't, when you don't participate, and we spend our whole time trying to work on Skype. We, we go with what we got, and then you complain about it. Next question. What else you got? I mean, you don't have to get defensive about it. Jeez, I'm just <laughs> asking a question. Uh, no. Well, speaking of defensive, see, I was worried that you were going to come out swinging because, uh, because, like, seconds before we went live, you lost, like, a big piece of equipment at the airport. Like, how much of your brain is, like, in the back of its head being all like, I wonder if that's <laughs> gone? I'm trying to well, be, be The hind brain that's in the back of his head. I mean, I don't know. Like, to be honest, it's it's something I'll deal with when I'm not trying to focus on being funny. Yeah, so you're in where? Where are you right now? Cleveland. 
And do you, and you just got in like seconds ago because when I called you before, you were driving in the car. Uh, no, I wanted to go have dinner with uh, my old friends uh, Matthew Finley and uh, Beth Class, who I've known forever, and uh, they I ate dinner with them, and then I came to the hotel, the Red Roof Inn. Right and on. then I realized that my USB modem uh, is not here with me, and now we're doing the show. Wait a minute. So you th- this is this is hotel Wi-Fi, which I'm just uh, and, and and why is it? Have you known? Am I the only one who's like, why is it that every cheap ass hotel seems to have better Wi-Fi than the expensive ones that you have to pay like fourteen dollars for? I could explain that. Is that a shared experience? Do you, do you uh, go for it? I, the host I mean, of I, tech news today. Fewer rooms. Oh, no, really? ki- no, no lie. No kidding. And probably fewer people using it, but mostly fewer rooms. So, uh, yeah, no, I mean, this has like been like a big thing with me. That's all I've ever yelled about is uh, the fact that I think it's it's that. And then also, by and large, you're going to get some crappy motels for which I stay in a lot that don't even have like a system. They don't even have like a login through this thing. It's literally just a modem like a business class internet connection with a wireless modem that they just give you a password for and none right. of the like uh, commoditized internet sort of software in between. And you can get really dope internet connections, which is why people listen to this comedy podcast. So we can discuss where in budget motels you can get the best internet connections. Well, let's let's get away from complaining about uh, wireless connections and instead talk about something really funny, which is Tom's rage against people who call him out for spoilage. For, yeah, for spo- I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry to bring bring the, your show down. You guys are nice <laughs> enough to have me on. But all I can think about these days is just... What is bringing down this country? What threatens our freedom, threatens the national conversation, the oversensitivity to spoilers? One can't walk down the street discussing any sort of cultural entertainment without somebody leaping out of the bushes with a knife yelling, you just spoiled that for me. I'm going to cut you. (laughs) To be fair, that's a racist thing that you just said. Because <laughs> because that's what that's what, which which race is it? Justin is is really upset about spoilers all the time. I mean, Tom knows. <laughs> I don't want to justify it. I mean, you, you oh, know, now that I think about it, that accent was uh was pretty unfair uh, to to those people. <laughs> Tom, would you like to apologize? <laughs> to, to the spoiler sensitive out there? No, I am not going to apologize anymore to the to the 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 spoilerati out there. Who are trying to oppress us and 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 restrict our conversational abilities? So what? Okay, so you you are talking like a man who was personally damaged by an attack over what? What? Tell us where where on the on the Game of Thrones did they touch you? <laughs> right there, at the nearest. Uh, no, well, okay, so there's one example, right? On frame rate the other day, I don't even remember which of us said it, but we made a reference to something in the book, right? And This guy wrote in and said, I really wish you wouldn't even reference things in the book because now when something happens that makes me think about what you said, I'm going to be like, oh, this must be what they were talking about, and then it's ruined for me. And we should point out that this this conversation took place. And he does talk like that. In the... the (laughs) That is is an authentic spoiler accent. That is not an exaggeration. All right. Can we all just have this conversation... Understand, ladies and gentlemen, that we are in an internet and a culture of niche media. Imagine that we are a, a sweet tomatoes buffet, just a, a, an expansive, infinite buffet where you can get anything you want. So if you, let's say, get a certain kind of mustard dressing and put it on your salad and it is too spicy for you, you are yelling at that mustard dressing because it is too spicy. OK, like we, we, we make content that is very, 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 very specific. And if you don't like it, you can go get another thing because, in fact, the choices are infinite. But you cannot blame the product for being what it is, because that is I, why we create Internet. However, free, OK, Internet products. I, I think. I, I think there is a problem with spoiling, right? If you give away the ending of The Crying Game or Sixth Sense, that that is a disservice. And even if I have chosen the exactly. spicy mustard, like if all the, of a sudden the, the spicy game. mustard opens up its mouth and says, I see dead people, you know, and starts giving away the ending, I can't unhear it. 
So it's not just about choice. I get that. But people get get bent out of shape over the tiniest things. Like I, you know, we say like they're going to go to a castle. Oh, great. Now I know they're going to go to a castle. You guys totally ruined it for me. Is this the part where they go to a castle? This is a, this is a crappy castle. It looks like a church. Is this the part where they run into Castle from the show Castle? <laughs> and, he's <laughs> and he's dressed up as Mal from Firefly. So it's just a church transform into a castle and then attack oh, another wait, castle. You just, you just let me know that he was Mal from Firefly? I haven't watched Firefly. I didn't know that. Now I'm not going to be surprised when I see him on there. I'm unfamiliar with the fact that Fireflies are insects. And now I have to <laughs> deal with that. What's it that somebody forwarded me to uh, some comic where it was just like, uh, don't read the book before the movie because the book is filled with spoilers. Like, that's how bad. <laughs> exactly. It is. Exactly. That's the kind of situation we're in. It's like you can't just can't even discuss anything because people are like, whoa, spoil. And people are so afraid. We, we were in our Goodreads forum for Sword and Laser. We're reading a book. There's a thread called part three of the book. Please do not spoil later parts of the book. Just discuss part three. People are putting things that happened in part three in spoiler tags. You can do that in Goodreads and hiding it. And I'm like, no, you, it's okay to spoil part three. That's what the whole point of this thread is. But people are so scared. Like, well, I don't know. Somebody might wander All right, by. Well, if, if I can, ridiculous. Th there, things are more complicated now than they were 20 years ago because there's so many different levels. It's like everyone's watching their stuff at different times. And also, the, you've got the fact that, that they haven't seen the movie at the same time you have seen it. But then there's also, for example, in Game of Thrones, you got this whole blueprint of what happens up above. So you can say... I'm not worried about spoilers, meaning I've watched this week's episode, but instead here you're like, oh yeah, well, as we know in book six, that's when so-and-so dies. And you're like, oh, that's not what I- What? Death is a concept by which we mortals must live by? What? Yeah, I, I, oh, I, God damn it. But I well, okay, I can't tell this story without spoiling The Walking Dead, but like Justin and I- uh, we're talking about The Walking Dead and then Justin spoiled, like I knew there was some big conflict and somebody died, but then uh, they're like, yeah, so I guess there's a spoil. I'm like, yeah, someone dies. And you're like, yes, this specific character dies. And I was like, well, I didn't know it was that character until now. So I don't know. It's uh, I, I'm, I'm actually, I'm a little spoily sensitive. So shut up, Brian. You are the worst about spoilers. <laughs> I don't know what that means. On which side of being sensitive yeah. or you of casually spoiling. spoil things like like nobody's business. Okay. Uh, well, look, I that don't mean I like it. That don't mean I like people doing it to me. <laughs> I don't understand the conflict here. <laughs> I'm just saying you need to understand that you are in fact the double edged sword. You are sensitive to it, and yet you inflict <laughs> others with the same the same problem. Like 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 when and how? Because we talk about it. Like we have the whole spoiler zone in frame rate. We know. I, I can't think of a time that I've accidentally dropped a big spoiler on that. Well, I'm not talking about. I'm talking about our personal conversations. Here's here's where Brian will spoil things. All right. Brian will say, "Have you not seen this?" And I'll say, "No, no, no. I haven't seen this." And then I'll go, "Okay. Well." There's a thing I would like to talk to you about and then just edge around it until oh. the edges make the very yeah. specific outline that's, of the word that is the spoiler. That's 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 this that's the sales pitch. That's like that's like um But, uh, but it's not when you spoil it, when you actually spoil it by selling it. Well, I mean it depends because uh there no. are you can have a disappointing experience because you no. go into Apparently not. Apparently not. If you say you're disappointed, that spoils it for people. I literally have had that complaint. Wait, wait, in what context? Which side? What are you talking like about? People saying like, you know, I wish you wouldn't have said you were disappointed by the ending because now I'm ready to be disappointed by That's the ending. True. And true, that actually. kind of spoils it for me. Uh, I did have, there was one, there was one story that really was kind of, God damn, man, I do get sissy spoiled because like, uh, because I remember my mom finished the end of the book before me and was, and just her saying, wow, that ending, I never saw it coming. Like, like all of a sudden I'm walking into the ending being like, okay, now it's a puzzle. It's got to have some kind of flip and twist. And then, you know, and you figure it out at the end right. and then you're like, well, I kind of wished I hadn't heard that. And I, and I, I feel like we that. should just start spoiling everything. That's a tr <laughs> it's a true thing. Right. But there's a, there's a limit to what you can say. Like, and, and you are a bad person for Like, is your mom a bad person for saying that? What she said was perfectly reasonable. Sure. And. It hasn't ruined your life. It's like, oh, okay. Well, I got a different experience than I would have otherwise. I, I think if she had told you the ending, then like, yeah, that's against the rules. But this whole idea of like, if you in any way 
touch upon my pristine experience of cultural artifacts, then, then you, sir, deserve to go to the gallows. I, I actually, I'll tell you what, I'm totally with you, Tom. We all need to just get, just toughen up a little bit, all right? We need to stop being so goddamn sensitive. Like, I was joking about Brian being a spoiler, and that's fine. I have come to live with that. Brian is my friend. I still want to engage in his opinion because I find it valuable about things I have not seen or read. And I find his opinion valuable enough that I'm going to understand that every once in a while I might get a hint or a whiff of something that I would not have otherwise if I hadn't had this conversation. And this is my point about everybody who listens to shows that either we or others do where things might get a little bit spoiled. Like if I were to tell you that halfway through Iron Man 3, the Mandarin is Oscar Schindler from Schindler's List. And it is, in fact, not played by uh, what's Ben Kingsley, ben but Kingsley. really by Liam Neeson. <laughs> that is a spoiler from Iron Man 3. If I were to tell you that, then you should not be such a sissy that this ruins the movie for you. There. Now, hold on. I finally have it loaded so I can actually do the... There. <laughs> you got anything else you want to spoil, Justin, while you're at it ruining stuff? Uh, yes, I would. In The Hunger Games... Uh, the in the second movie, everybody is disqualified for heavy farting. Well, now wait a minute. That that's a spoiler for something that hasn't come out yet. Is that a spoiler or just a rumor at that point? Uh, I've seen the script, and <laughs> also in the script, it just is a lot of uh, it's just SFX kind of fart, and then another one SFX bigger fart, and then third SFX. Loudest fart you've ever heard. Now, That's I, just from the book, though. I, okay, now is <laughs> well. First of all, first of all, it, it should be pointed out that that part of the reason you're fired up in particular, Tom, is because you're dealing with this on the front lines. What, like, did you used to be sympathetic to uh, to sissy spoilage like me, uh, or but, and then now did you, you turn put on your spoiler water wings, yeah, and tread very lightly into yeah. the pool. I, 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 yes. I used to be very spoiled, like, let's just be good to people and not spoil things. But I thought that was a reasonable definition of not spoil. And maybe not that's no why more. I got so upset, is I thought I was being the good guy. Like, hold on, you know, sometimes people talk about what happens in a movie when you haven't seen it yet. So let's, you know, let's just hold off on being specific. And then people just started laying into me for being vague about things. You know like, what? This is, I, I, okay, now when I was a, a kid. wedding happens? Like, <laughs> more, the one that really got me, this is the one that really got me. On Sword and Laser, I was reading the Wikipedia summary of the book pick, which I had not read yet. Oh. And in that summary, it divulges a piece of information, which if you haven't read the book, you don't know is important. But once you find out, then you go, oh, that's that's what that means. And a guy on Twitter like just ripped into me like, you spoiled the book because you said X, and that reveals something about the book. And I'm like, I didn't know it did, but now I do because you took me to test for spoiling, therefore you spoiled me. I waited a long time for that. <laughs> So what's the solution? Now, here's the thing. When I was a death. kid, I remember... Death to everybody. <laughs> death to Bring everybody. like a cold wind and let it reap its awful vengeance on any who dare defy it. Now, is is spoilers like, like, like something that was a bigger deal because we're older now? Or culturally, do we all, are we all babies about it now? Because like when I was a kid, like every review, you would watch uh, Siskel and Ebert at the movies just right. so you could have them sketch out... The, the the plot for you, but they now, would spoil the crap out of everything. Well, yeah, and well, and now on the downside, I mean, I, you would go to a movie, and since you knew this guy was going to become this hero, like the first two acts were all were all you were just waiting to get through him so you could get to the part till he turns into the superhero. But uh, I I don't know if it's better or not. I think we should again. I, I'd say we go on offense. Let's just keep. Let's just like, let's just physically everything. kill everyone who let's, cries let's about spoilers. Let's continue to get, like. Let's just spoil. What else is big right now? I'll spoil everything. Nate, Brian, name something. I'm gonna spoil it. Uh, do, uh well, uh, they call me Sid Spoiler. The, the, uh, yeah, I'm thinking. What's funny is I'm trying to think of something that doesn't have a spoiler. Because uh, like I started like Star Trek. Uh, no, no, um, uh, Citizen. Uh, no, um, uh, Star Wars Episode Seven. There you go. What happens in Star Wars Episode Seven? All right. Here's the thing. And this is I'm not I, I signed an NDA on this. Yeah. Uh -oh. So I'm really I'm I'm breaking I'm breaking the magician's code. All right. And I tell you <laughs> that uh in Star Wars seven, okay, Chewbacca 
is revealed, and this is long time coming. Yeah, sure. To be gay. Well, yeah. I, wait, I thought wait, that's I thought that was assumed. Yeah. No, I think it's pretty it's obvious. Explicit. <laughs> Look, you got it's your hardcore. On. They're they're like gonna oh, violate yeah. the, for the first time. It's gonna be hardcore Wookie on solo action. No, no, <laughs> no. Because he... <laughs> here's what happens. Solo and Chewbacca have been away for a long time at the point that Han Solo comes back, right? Yeah. And he's like, I gotta find Chewie. Yes. And so they go to they go to Kashyyyk and uh it's an extended it's the one day like, of the year where it's called gay chic that's their yeah. their big festival and so he runs in on some real like hairy like it, it it's a sound as if there were just two bath mats slapping against each other over and over and over again that's all the sound you hear and it is a 15 minute just unbroken <laughs> shot of chewbacca railing a small Wookiee uh, repeatedly. Now they're going to obviously have to tone this down for the PG-13 rating. Well, I mean, they, what they're doing, what I've heard now, I mean, this is just rumor and you've actually read the script, but I it's have. Like, I've heard that they plan to cover it with like convenient blaster fire or like uh, like a lightsaber uh, turns on on its own just to cover up the, the naughty bits. And uh, so there's a battle scene going on in front of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In fact, actually, that makes a lot more sense now. Yeah. There will. But I'll tell you this. Chewbacca will shoot first, and there will be no question about it afterward. <laughs> what do they call, um, I guess, uh, how would you tell, like, who's uh, who's in the... And by the way, you ever wonder what's in that belt of his? That chest belt? It ain't ammo. I'll tell you that. I mean, it's ammo on a different level. It's a lot of accoutrement for a little predilection of old Chewbacca. Patrick Delahanty asks if I saw the images they released of a shaved Chewbacca. If that's real in any way, I'm playing the hell out of that on the show. I don't care. I don't care what that does to our safe for work reputation. So, uh, all right, look, do you want uh, wait. Chewie disputes accusations is what I'm being told. Let's see if we can see this. <laughs> yeah, dude. Tell you tell you could verify. Is this an actual shot or is this some kind of cover up where there where he's got a beard? Right. Oh, man, there we All go. Right, listen, man, uh, Jason Collins was engaged to be married to a woman. And, like, last week he came out as gay. So don't even give me this nonsense. Of course. Dude, by the way, you ever met gay guys love grabbing boobs. I'm just going to get real here. <laughs> I one time saw a bar fight. This is no BS. Whoa, you know, whoa, whoa, and- whoa, whoa. <laughs> gay guys love. I didn't know that. Uh, now I'm totally spoiled. I'll tell you this. I actually saw a bar fight where a gay guy got punched in the head because he wouldn't stop grabbing this dude's girlfriend's boobs. That's a fact. Like Agnes, Agatha, Jermaine, and Jack. Now, now, what's the deal? You, do you think like because they? Uh, I'm, I'm not going to say don't enjoy it, but what's the justification on their part to keep grabbing boobs? Like, like just to just to be hilariously pissing off a what's frat the boy. Justification. Listen, the justification in this is you're going to have to ask them on why they do it. I just know it is done. Like. I would, I could hazard a guess. The guess I would hazard is that boobs are just, uh, they're, they're uh, just amazing mysteries of nature. <laughs> you just want to investigate that. It's a, it... <laughs> I just saw a nod. Oh, come on, dude. Dive in, dive say, down it's the like hole. A, it's like a mortician touching a corpse, right? They deal with them all the time. It's not a big no, but deal. see, that's just it. They go don't, though. They're novel because not, yeah. not in any... It would be like a mortician dealing with a, um, a an OS2 computer, you know? I mean, it's like it's like it's no, so it's, strange it, and I, novel. I guess what I was trying to say is it's touching something that has no no meaning. Well, no, I mean, right? listen, it, just because you don't have a, a sexual interest in something doesn't mean you don't have an curious. interest in something. What, wait, we don't that, want to bang everything. You don't open up your iPad and want to start, you know, using it as a, uh, a flashlight. That, yeah, well, that's what I was just saying. Is, is that's because that. they're so they're so novel. Like they they never deal with them. You're like, that's so wild. I'd love Flashlight to. Flashlight app is actually one of the more popular ones. Which ones? Apps. Oh, <laughs> iPad. Oh, oh my God! Did you guys see that? Bro, that was, God. It was there was the there right. was an ad thief. We ah. just finished the most amazing ad ever, and an ad thief swoops in, steals the ad, goes sliding right out the freaking window over there. What what are we gonna do? He stole my app, Brian. He, I'm sorry, Justin. He stole he stole your what? He stole my body, Brian. He stole your body. You do look different. I had to grab 
pretty much a dead barista off the side of the road. Uh, I don't know what he did with my body. Oh, okay, but 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 I mean, you're you're in there though. That's really you. This is still me, Brian. I'm still the same dead inside, hateful person who wants to kick a nun in the balls. <laughs> I just look ugly. <laughs> Well, Justin, the ad, the ad thief stole our ad. What are we going to do now? You know what we're going to do? We're not going to let the ad thief ruin our country. We're going to carry on as if nothing happened. So, oh, you're saying we're going to fill the empty void in our hearts by talking about one of our fine sponsors. Right. And it's the best thing to fill the void in your heart or your stomach. Coffee from tonks.org. All right, now listen, I'm I'm not much of a coffee drinker. I'm more of a tea kind of guy, but if you seduce me with your coffee ways. Listen, listen, either go back to Britain, Brian, <laughs> and drink some freaking coffee, okay? It's America. We drink coffee here. And the, the thing is, the thing is you probably drink tea because you think, oh, coffee is this, uh, you know, the, the snobbery industrial complex has taught me that coffee is expensive and has to be made by people with big bellies and beards, and it's not true. That's not, not true, Brian. That, uh, that's not true. And then they don't have to be, like, like brought on burrows like you no, see no, on... No, that is true. What if... Okay. What if, Brian, I told you that you could get coffee delivered to your door every two weeks... 24 hours after it roasted. Dude, I don't like to leave the house for nothing. So if and I, I can... By the way... Hold on, wait, you said... the best beans possible to be picked every two weeks. So, okay, now I'm assuming that what you're saying is the better the beans, the better the coffee is. That's all. That's all it is. It's easy. They're trying to fool you, Brian. But with Tonks.org, they pick the great beans. They've got the great team. They do the great roasting. You just make it at home, and you're laughing. No, you're wait a minute. I see that. I got seven thousand dollars for a latte. I go to some like you know, you know, hoagie bucks, and then they, they they got these baristas make it look like it's they're they're doing highfalutin engineering sciences. They're like, oh, I got electrical engineering degree. That's why I'm able to operate this machine. You're telling me it's easy, and even a tea drinker can do it. So even even a pinky toting communist tea drinker <laughs> could do it, Brian. That's how simple it is. Well, I want to get my hands on some of this Tonks coffee. What do I got to do? Free. You don't got to do nothing but type a few letters on your keystrokes now, there okay, I'm sorry, Tonks.org this... slash NSFW. On, on its way out, the ad thief just popped me right in the ear, and I didn't quite hear. I did. It sounded like you said the F word. Did you say the F word? What? No, I said the keyboard. Keystroke. I thought you said free. Oh, yeah, that F word. <laughs> You know me, Brian. I want to wear the belt, <laughs> but I'm talking about free. Tonks.org slash NSFW. Get yourself a free sample shipped right to your home, delivered by a uniformed member of the U.S. government. Dude, Tonks.org slash NSFW, and uh, score one for a victory against ad thieves. That's right. Talk about rabble rousing. Oh, you, had, you had a plan. You had uh, an idea to stir up, stir up some trouble, and spoil some spoilage with the spoils of war. Um, I did. <laughs> are you are you, are you wanting to back down? Are you not feeling it? Um, we can save it for uh, another time. I don't mind. I don't mind. No, I mean I feel like it, it, this is an idea in the moment. So either we either we we punch the the go. Either listen, Brian, I'm gonna to you and Tom. Like you guys have the other codes, the Alpha Zulu Tango Foxtrot. Do you code. do you know this? Do you know this idea, Tom? Oh, you're pulling the trigger on it. Uh, look, okay. So where where this conversation goes, right, <laughs> is spoiler sensitivity. We've covered all that. I got my rage out of my system. But is it a spoiler to have knowledge in advance, right? There's that whole thing on io9 morning spoilers yeah. where they like talk about all the leaks that all the quotes people have said and and things about movies and and and, and so that's where this conversation goes, right? Mm -hmm. Is that is that spoiling? I mean, and some people are like, I don't want to know. I don't want to know any leaks. I want to go in go in fresh. That's that's different than spoiler sensitivity. Okay, but we have a specific plan here. Well, here's yeah, the deal. Obviously, the problem with all these spoilers and even the ones that would be borderline on rumors, is that not only do we not know what they are supposed to mean to you, the person that listens to them, but also 
we don't know if they're true at all. So I feel like there's a lesson to be learned in people understanding what spoilers are and when to take them seriously. And the best way, of course, Brian, to do that is to invent a completely fake spoiler right. and let it spread all over the world. So, okay, in so fact, you're it's saying this is, this, is part of your, this is part of your attack the people who are sensitive about spoilers. This is your kill the crybabies campaign. Hashtag kill the crybabies is, uh, no, is think the of, operation. Think of it as something number. milder than that, Brian. Think of it as like cauterizing an amputated limb. Sure. Like they're already broken. They're not they're not whole right. people. We're doing them a favor of stopping them from bleeding out by taking a hot iron out of our campfire and applying it to their bloody stump. As as we are wont to do. Okay. <laughs> so so you're saying okay, so the spoilage, of course, is to try to set fire to an internet rumor and make it take off and have it turn out to be totally false. What, what, how many people we got watching right now? That's what we need to know. We need to know whether or not, before we pull the trigger on this, we need to know if we have the firepower, because I don't know mm -hmm. if we do. Mm -hmm. Chat room will tell us here any second now. We got 456 mean, and unfiltered. Okay. Is that Brian, enough? Here's what I'm saying. I heard, this is a rumor, uh, from best-selling author... Patricia Harkins Bradley, who uh, I, I heard might she's she's got an itchy finger and it sounds like she might be about to tweet it on her own, in which case I would encourage everyone else to retweet it, because I think the rumor would have more credibility, especially if when people investigated who this was, her bio read best selling author of the Diamond Club, number number three bestseller on iTunes. What a lot of people might, might not have known is that since the success of the Diamond Club, she's made a bunch of friends in the publishing industry. Yeah. Sure. Obviously, uh, the Diamond Club was a huge success in the UK. Yep. Uh, but this is more of a a general uh, a general kind of news thing. She's told me that she saw some really, uh, you know, some some real evidence that Harry Potter Eight is coming out. It's gonna happen. Christmas. It's gonna be a one-off. It's gonna be a one-off by Christmas, and I that was amazing when I heard the news, and that's why I'm pretty sure Patricia Harkins Bradley is about to tweet how excited she is about the news. Hashtag Harry Potter Eights. Yeah, so hashtag Harry Potter 8 is what she is going to kind of put at the end of all this. And anybody who is also really excited about this should really use hashtag Harry Potter 8. At least that's what I would assume would happen. <laughs> right. No, because it's ATE number eight. It seems like like part of the reason the OMG Coden stunt worked so well and got everyone so excited was because it was this latent desire that everyone had. It was a pregnant moment where everybody wanted uh, Conan to, to do something like come to Revision 3. Likewise, it seems like right now a lot of people would love there to be Harry Potter 8. So I'm just saying if we all talked about the news. Yeah, Harry hashtag. Potter number 8. That's what we want. <laughs> yeah. we want. I mean, theoretically, if you're going to have a hashtag, you'd want the maximum number of other characters to say whatever else you wanted. Yes. Back in 2010, I think, uh, The Independent newspaper in the UK quoted Ms. Rowling as saying, uh, I could definitely write an 8th, 9th, 10th. She said this to Oprah Winfrey on uh, on television. I'm not going to say I won't. I don't think I will. I feel I'm done, but you never know. Well, I'm just saying that certainly lends credibility to uh, to Patricia Harkins Bradley's uh, uh, quote that she's saying. Justin, oh, okay, you're just restarting your video there? Yeah, you need to restart your video to me because I'm not, I'm, I saw, I see a frozen thing. Okay, there we go. Let me know if that happens again. Uh, do you have video there, Tom? No, I don't have it. Oh, okay. I haven't well, had it the whole show. Just there to, we go. Oh. <laughs> All right, well, that, that certainly changes things. Uh, oh, my gosh. I can't believe it. Hold on. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> the uh, a little bird told me some exciting news. Wish I could share. Hashtag Harry Potter eight. I can't believe it. She's going public. <laughs> and look at this. It's already being retweeted by Bob McBob. Holy S word. 
I just I just feel like that's huge. Uh, I mean, I'll tell you, I'm retweeting it because I'm so excited for this uh, this this concept here that. Uh, you know, I'll tell you, I'm excited for Harry Potter Ray. Brian, Tom, are you guys excited for Harry Potter Ray? <laughs> you know, I I am not surprised given the 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 problems with her venture into a non Harry Potter book. Oh, I, I thought imagine. that was a horrible flop, but no. it you know. But once you've had a t- look, what look. Let's just say maybe maybe it's a little bit like Michael Jordan going to baseball for a while. She tried her casual vacancy, but she couldn't resist the right. lure of being best in the world at something. And so, now she wants to come back and win the championship. Quidditch game. Man, <laughs> look at this. Already more details. And yes, it's true. Friend is working on the film. Oh, hang on. They got Whoa. the wrong thing there. There it is. All the rumors are flying. Are you kidding me? Harry Potter 8 in December? That's 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 what we're hearing. That's amazing. So excited that about that. That means the book is done. <laughs> so she's been working on it since Oprah. That's my theory. Since she said that about on Oprah, she was talking, you know how Oprah changes people's lives. She was telling Oprah, like, sure, I guess I could do it. I bet as soon as she got off the stage at Oprah, she's like, I've got an idea. I've got to do this. Oprah probably Oprah probably told her to do it. She probably, she probably said, hey, how would you like to make another billion dollars? And she's like, all right, I guess. And you've got a plot. And, <laughs> well, just you. And you've got another revenue stream. <laughs> um, I'm going to do a search right now for Harry Potter 8 and see what's going on. Ryan Alcott just tweeted, I'm still drunk. Hashtag Harry Potter 8. <laughs> <laughs> also, J.K. Rowling tweeted that as well. Uh, yeah, drunk with power and money. Man, at what point do you just genuinely stop caring about how much freaking money you have? Like, what's what's the number where it's like, it's all, or, or is it just like a game? Like, you still want the you the highest score no matter what, even though it's not about what you could do with the cash. Well, I think that's part of what would motivate her, right? Is is she had when once you have a universe like that created and you've spent so much time with it and it's been with you since you were poor, since you weren't rolling in it, yeah, uh, all the way through your current. Sure, you want to break away from that, right? But what does every band eventually do? They go do a greatest hits tour. That's true. But um, so she she busted away. Now she's like, you know what? Let's go back. Let's let's yeah, Dresden God files it, this Tom, shit. Can you just shut up? I'm t- I don't want to be spoiled by the fact that there is a Harry Potter 8. And I'm really disgusted by the fact that you're even talking about it. Look, I don't know that Christopher Nolan's going to direct it. <laughs> but you don't know that he's not. That's right. the thing. He hasn't denied it. God, I thought he was just directing the Matthew McConaughey Surfs the Stars movie. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. Becky retweeted. Rowling Easters, Warner Brothers confirma a Lindsay Lohan sin maquillar in el papel de Ginny Weasley in la película <laughs> HPH, Harry Potter AIDS. That's huge. <laughs> I mean, it's going, it's, it's going to have, they're going to, they've got the, the big three back. It's going to be some kind of Dresden Files like investigation horror thing. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, listen. And again, I don't want to betray the trust of Patricia Harkins Bradley, best-selling author of The Diamond Club. But she let me know that this is going to be a, like what Tom said, an adult mystery. And one of the main characters from the books is going to die within the first 10 pages. <laughs> wow. Whoa, that is whoa, huge. whoa. You just uh, spoiled that? Spoiled me on it's that? It's a little bit of a spoiler here. <laughs> what the... Crap, man. <laughs> Little, oh, I lost my spoiler button. Damn it. <laughs> I'm going to have to reload it. It's not yes. Harry Potter. And I don't want to say who it is because that wouldn't be right. If I said it, it might be Ron. That's true. <laughs> is, it, a- is it true that Jim Butcher is, is going to write the screenplay version? Uh Oh, my gosh. Hold on. Somebody's already put together a Reddit in the movies for Patricia Harkins Bradley. <laughs> Look at this. They said there's already a Reddit happening. Uh, best-selling author Patricia Harkins Bradley confirms Harry Potter 8. I can't believe it. Upvote that, yeah. Because it's true. And you should only upvote stuff that's true. <laughs> and spoilers. <laughs> man, this is the moment. This is where, right, I'll tell you what. Oh, man. There's, there is something I want to talk about, but I feel like we should save it for later on in, in the show. Uh, uh, how would you save it for when I can have video? Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, I already, I'll take some. I, I restarted it. Damn it. You guys are 
It's killing uh, me. I don't understand this video business. Why it's nah, it's hard. It's hard work. Are I'll you tell you what. Tea? Tech- I'll just keep. Although it. I feel like now the podcast is spoiled because I can see the video. Before it was so much more to my imagination. <laughs> Wait, Jury has a hat on. I didn't know that. God damn it! <laughs> People are saying three friends texted me. What? Man, now is it true that there's going to be like a time travel element to the Harry Potter movie? Like I heard he goes no, back to 1776. That's not true, Brian. I can confirm that's not true. There's not no. like a revolution. I thought there was some revolution. Oh wait, is there a revolution in the Wizarding World? It's no, it's a flashback. A lot of people are thinking it's going to be time travel, but it's actually a flashback with a pensieve. So he's he's going to essentially be in the scene, and and so in the leaked versions. It looks like he's time traveling, but you know it's what? just him seeing someone else's yeah. memory. Uh, DJ- also, uh, Brian, can you confirm that I can get video on this podcast? <laughs> okay, I'll just keep clicking it over and over again. Uh, this, uh, oh, this, uh, I don't know about the revolution, Brian, but I did hear from a pretty reliable person familiar with the matter uh, that an old enemy is going to return who we thought was gone for good. Uh, yes. Uh, can, can you verify whether or not people are, are forwarding this information to at Oprah so that Oprah <laughs> to, to let give her the heads up about the literary news? Man, I'm just clicking the hell out of this video thing and it's not it's not. It just doesn't want to stay. Yeah. It just keeps saying try closing other programs that are using video. Try you know, leaking the next Harry Potter movie. Try, yeah, man. Why don't you? <laughs> sure. I'm Mr. I'm Mr. Video won't I'm play. I'm hearing it might even be better than Blackwater. That's no, not possible. So, I'll tell you what. Let's do. Let's do this, Justin. Why? Uh, why don't you talk to nice people about one of our other sponsors while I try to get this video thing sorted out? Whoa, 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 whoa! It just happened again. The ad thief came in, swooped up, stole one of my one of the best ads. And now we got no sponsors. There's got yeah, be- I got no body again, Brian. Yeah, Justin Robert Young. What do you mean you got no body? What is? They took it again. The ant thief took my body. Why? Why are you wearing a ma- a catcher's mask? Because I I still had the corpse from earlier. Yeah. Uh, but the face was about to just slough off in a pile of goo. So this is the best that I could do to keep my face on. It's like holding. A- you know what? I, this is kind of a cool thing because you're wearing somebody else's body. You're able to go someplace that you could normally go, and nobody knows that it's you, Justin. This By is a- golly, it's better than a 512-bit encryption tunnel, isn't it, Brian? I, I don't know what that is. No, you wouldn't because you're not some snooty know-it-all like Tom Merritt over there <laughs> always talking about CISPA and PIPA and six strikes. You know, You know what? This is going to be great for them, right? For those kinds of people. But for real Americans like you or me, this is going to be good for us too. Because Pro XPN, sure it does the open VPN and the PPTP, but it also just keeps your personal internet private. My internet. That's right. That's what I said. Look, <laughs> and- the lips are dead, right? <laughs> Give me a break. So the important thing, wait, wait, what are some of the benefits? Of, somebody hasn't heard of a VPN. What, you get you get around region encoding? If, like, there's yeah. some poll they didn't want to vote in, but they're like, you're from Canada, sorry. You're from Australia, no, sir. All of that stuff, if you're at work and they're trying to keep you down by preventing you from wasting your entire day on Facebook, it works there, probably. It also, the best thing is in a cafe. If you're at, you, you should be just, you know, making your coffee at home, but you want the free Wi-Fi. <laughs> so you go there and you know that there's all these like secret agents and bad guys and hackers, who knows who's on that Wi-Fi, stealing your information. You use the VPN and then they can't see your internet. They can't spy on you. I'll tell you what, man, it's the spying thing that creeps me out. You got ISPs that are watching to see not only like what you get, but like how you get it. Like like uh, you were saying the six strikes rule, you got all this traffic shaping for BitTorrent where it's like, let's say you want to use BitTorrent to get like a, 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 a an Ubuntu distribution or whatever. And you got some ISPs like, man, throttle, we don't like BitTorrent. Or you think all BitTorrent is evil and steals babies, but it's not true. And by the way, By the way, Brian, Steve Gibson, security now himself, has given this a great review. He didn't like anything, but he likes this. He trusts it. (laughs) 
<laughs> and I tell you what, man, I'm terrified of that six strike laws because that's on the record. You 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 sitting there, you're grabbing something, they're like, oh, but that looks that looks too much like Game of Thrones to me. But it's like, well, it's not. You're like too late. Strike one on the yeah, record. Uh, oh, I, your Linux Mint ISO has given you a strike. By the way, it's three strikes, communists. Not, not six. six. Stri- not six strike. Ta- take it from the man rules. in the catcher's mask. <laughs> Uh, all right, well, so how can people get their hands on ProXPN? I'm glad you asked, Brian. What you want to do is go to ProXPN.com slash twit. Now, normally, it would be $10 a month or $75 for an entire year, which is pretty cheap when Dude. you think about it. Yeah, $75 a year ain't much. Don't do that. We've got a special offer. Use the code NSFW and receive 20% off for the lifetime of you or the corpse that's using your account. <laughs> so when Justin Robert Young possesses your body, he'll continue to get the 20% off from our friends over I at Pro I will. Uh, that's less than five bucks a month, Brian, on the yearly plan. Dude, that ain't you nothing. Beat it. Five bucks yeah. a month, I, I, I blow that on music services. If I can get the privacy and peace of mind of knowing I'm not going to get all six striked out, then heck yeah, sign me up for Pro XPN. ProXPN.com slash twit. Use that offer code NSFW. My face is about to slide off the right. pile of goo. Yeah, all right. Let's get back to the show. And hopefully we'll, we'll have a freaky Friday. You'll be, be The spell is undone just like that. Uh, I'll tell you what, Justin. It looks like this year is not going to have video. We'll just make it a radio That's show from here awesome. on. That's awesome. It surely is. Uh, Don't call me Shirley. <laughs> well, forget about it. I won't then. This is yeah. There's no way. The only way for me to do it would be to reboot a thing and stop the broadcast. So we'll just do. We'll just be a radio broadcast from out here to make it better. I'll close my eyes for the remainder. I'm going to uh, totally. That's awesome. Look, <laughs> really, what you should be doing, Justin, is closing your eyes and imagining that that penultimate scene of Harry Potter eight, <laughs> uh, with with the fire and the wizards and the and the big the the super cauldron. I mean, I've only seen the first. Well, all right. I haven't seen any pages of it. Patricia Harkins Bradley, best-selling author of The Diamond Club, has told me what her friend has told her. He's read the rough manuscript of it, and apparently it's very intense, Brian and Tom. Listen, there's a lot of situations that these characters are put in that they have not before. And and listen, you saw the last book that you wrote. It was filled with dirty language, sexual situations. I think we're going to see a bit of that come into this latest Harry Potter series. This is for... Well, why do you think she's talking to Patricia Harkins Bradley about this? No, I don't... No, no, no. This is like, listen, you know, uh, the the literary scene is a very incestuous culture. Everybody works on everything. The people that are talking to Patricia Harkins Bradley about, uh, you know, uh, the, the latest incarnations of whatever she's working on are the same people who work for the same companies that are you know, dealing with this this particular project, I, I would assume. I don't and know, she Brian. Wants guidance. Top- she wants, she's like, look, I tried an adult novel and it didn't work, Patricia. Can you give me some tips? Let's talk about this. It's not that she wants to duplicate. The authors always want to get tips, get advice, get feedback, you know. Sometimes I mean, they want just the tip and that's all. All right. On that Another subject, I need to uh, – this this – kills me that you're not getting video of this justin and you could watch the feed but it would come much later we do have a spoiler uh screen grab of of what appears this to be awesome of uh, star wars 7 uh you can see right here it appears to be a live action shot of a uh, of a very furry small being uh rocking out just out of frame below <laughs> uh chewbacca which i think that's as much as we could show <laughs> chewie doesn't look that happy he, he He's does conflicted, look, Tom. He looks a little bit freaked out. He's got issues. I don't think he likes Ewoks either. He's I'm got sure issues. Oh, you, do you think it's like a like a? Uh, uh, there's all kinds of things I was just gonna go into there that I'm just gonna <laughs> shut down right now. Spoiler alert. So, uh, so what do you got working on, Tom? I'm not involved in any way in Harry Potter 8. No, no, not, you're done. not doing it. So let's go uh, ahead and clear that up. I heard a spoiler that Tom Merritt was a major character in Harry Potter 8. 
No, it's, I, I, what, I mean, are you talking about FSL tonight? Stuff? Yeah, let's talk about FSL tonight. We mentioned it on the show wow. before, but I know you guys are, uh, you're making good on your Kickstarter claims now. So yeah, uh, Justin's I actually just traveling sent down. a box of these FSL posters. Yeah. Uh, as uh, the Paul Wheatley shield design thank you paul wheatley uh that that i signed and i sent him off to justin so he'll sign those and they'll go off to the backers and then david michael who works for slash loot works for scott johnson is like the most competent man in america uh has has packed in a bunch of these phil meadows prints of the entire coming 2013 season uh, that that Justin and I both will get a pack of these. So when you find us out and about in the world, it like say Nertacular or maybe Dragon Con, uh, we'll 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 totally have forgotten to keep those with us and be like, oh, I'm really sorry, man. <laughs> but you'll um, describe how awesome room. they were. You'll be like, they were really pretty pretty dope, man. This, yeah, one of uh, these days. Totally in my hotel. I could give him a key. <laughs> Can you run up? Can you run up? Maybe. Yeah. It's like, uh, uh, yeah. Leave my other stuff alone, though, bro. Be right, cool. uh, but yeah, we're gonna be uh, the the season kicks off first week of June. All Star Game is coming up in uh, at Nerdtacular, yeah. and then the finale will be at DragonCon. As it as it always is. And uh, hey, can we talk about Nerdtacular actually as well? Because that's uh, you guys are gonna be doing live live stuff there. Have you? I guess we probably have gotten our schedules, but I haven't looked at any of it because I'm an idiot who obviously didn't read anything. <laughs> can we? Can we share? Yeah, no. Book? By all means, share what an idiot I am. Go for it. So, uh, uh, David Michael, right? That's his name, Tom? Mm hmm. David Michael not only has run our Kickstarter, but also is the man behind Nerdtacular and has done a, like, the best job. And listen, we have all been involved in podcasting for a, a period of time, enough that we can get a sense of the kind of personalities that are drawn to it, including ourselves, who are to varying degrees of scatterbrained. Yes. Uh, David Michael is the perfect person to herd the cats yes. that are podcasting talent. And he did a fantastic job with Nerdtacular because he, he laid out everything that everybody needs to do. He gave everybody step-by-step, -step, super easy, just call this number, make these, like, these reservations. So I get a call from Brian that's like, uh, yeah, apparently they don't book our hotels for Nertacular. Okay, so no, 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 this is, you're, you're, it's out of order because they sent this instruction email like three weeks ago and then, and like I opened oh, it. Oh no, way more than that. Right, whatever. Yeah, like, like long, a month and a half ago. Yeah, whatever, long enough ago that, that, that if had I read it, it would have been, you know, obvious, but it's like, I, I see, I'm like, ah, oh, instructions, that's something really important that I should get to. And by the way, if you ever send me an email, if you don't get a response in the next hour after you send me an email, it's very likely you will get a response six weeks from now saying, hey, bro, finally getting caught up on email. Sorry, finally got to this. So feel free to send it again. But they, they send it and it's like, it, and the whole thing is like, I open it on my iPhone and I'm like, this is really important. I should read it. So I mark it as unread. And then, you know, 20 minutes, you know, by the time I get to wherever, there's like 40 messages above it. So I never get around to reading it. But then like six weeks later, I get a message like, hey, Notice that you haven't reserved your hotel room yet. And I was just like, oh, yeah, no, I guess. Uh, and on top of that, I'm like, uh, oh, yeah, I didn't know I was supposed to do that. Uh, and uh, and then they're all like, well, you going to take care of that? And I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty, pretty big. Uh, I'll, I'll try to. And then like as <laughs> if as if it's a, you know, a child, they're all like, you want me to reserve it? Just say which dates you'll be there and I'll reserve it for you. And then, uh, and so then I'm like, ah, uh, when's everyone else getting there? <laughs> and so, and so finally, you know, they're all like, you know, just, just put me down for whatever Justin's there. So I'm coming in the night before. Uh, and I think I might actually extend that to the night before that, actually. Uh, yeah. You're going to come in two but, nights before. Yeah. Brian, you were, you were uh, upset that this thing had not been done. No, I just, uh, I just was surprised. I was, I was surprised. It was all. Sure. But uh, uh, not justifiably uh, so. Like I am the idiot. I'm. I'm for the first to admit that's uh, old. Old spoiling and crying about spoilers and crying about not having spoiler a hotel alert. You should have booked your wood. hotel a month and a half <laughs> ago. Yes. Uh, wouldn't it have been a spoiler if they had told you they had your hotel? Room? I know. I wanted to preserve the mystery. Now they know. <laughs> now they know. <laughs> now, what do we? I mean, because I kind of feel like Tom, you have been 
the person who's a veteran of Nerdtacular. Me and Brian are the Mongol hordes who are are coming in this year, and I think right. we have a lot of Neither big plans. Neither one of you have been there before. Uh, we yeah. have we have something that that Brian has actually gotten uh, to approve the exclusive for Nerdtacular uh, frog pants, the the, the the Tadpool Diamond Club Union T-shirt, which will only be available during Nerdtacular. Wow. Uh, is going to be on sale. That's but amazing. I want one what, of those. What would you like to say? Any, any advice for us? Because I feel like we're, right. we're bringing right. in a lot and, of stuff here. And there, and, and don't get me wrong. There have been plenty of people involved in Nerdtacular longer than me. I, I got in on the last of the movie Nerdtaculars because it started as just like, hey, everybody who listens to The Instance, let's get together and watch a movie. And then as, as Scott's empire grew, Nerdtacular grew, yeah, and now it's this two-day conference in a ski lodge, and it's awesome. Uh, but having been there, this will be my fourth one. Just know that the nicest people from the chat realm will be there in attendance. And I'll be there in order to just hang out and have a good time. Uh, and Scott will bribe them with prizes. So they will be super happy and super in a good mood. Uh, and it's like going to any one of these conferences you go to. But... There's not a lot of like vendor pressure or None. None weird organization right? people. Like it's it's just it's the nicest conference I've ever been to. So and now this is also the first time that they've made it two days and they'll be an overnight. So it's like there's going to be hanging out. I don't know if there, I assume there's a bar there. Somebody's going to have settlers of Catan and Munchkin or somebody. Yeah, last year Paul and Storm were there, and so the night before. In one of the hotels, we were playing Cards Against Humanity in the lobby. Yeah. Just as performance art, basically. It was me, Veronica, Paul, and Storm playing Cards Against Humanity, and people kind of crowding around, like, cheering and chipping in. It was really fun. Yeah. So I'm going to try to come the night before and uh, talk in... Uh, is, it, is it secret what the what the program is? I don't no. know okay. what the program I mean, it's is. Like, yeah, there's it's a, a lot of stuff that they're going to put um, <laughs> us on randomly as, like, talent. Right. But, uh, well, specifically, Scott asked what it would take for me to actually do my full stage show. And so oh, yeah, uh, I'm sure he would like you to. Yeah. Well, that 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 may be in the works. So how what? about that? Yeah. Because I told him he asked me about it. I was like, well, that's that's a big production. And that, you know, Brian makes his living at that. Yeah, so. I'm sorry. I, and I'll be the first to apologize. Did not mean to drop that bomb. <laughs> that might be about to happen. <laughs> Probably should have checked with spoiler alert. Scott might be pissed. He was like, you spoiled it for everyone, Brush One. <laughs> well, because last year was a big deal. He had he had musical guests for the first time. It was John and Elio opening and then Paul and Storm at the end of the night. It was pretty awesome. Yeah, man. And I'll tell you what, there's a big music component this year. You got George Robb. Uh, right. Is George Robb going to be there? That's amazing. Oh, hell yeah. Dude, yes. I okay. didn't know that. This it, oh I, wait I'm sorry was that I'm my cue? double check on that but I believe <laughs> Rob is definitely booked to be there. Uh yeah dude it's good now is it still sold out is there any remedy no, for just that just release more tickets oh really I was say I heard him saying something about releasing tickets soon so they're they're out again did you say tickets because that would be awesome <laughs> <laughs> they're like stamps <laughs> you're like you don't need a whole ticket just take a few tickets tickets uh, small. <laughs> Yeah, let's see. If I click on get tickets. Yeah, Man, Zula there, is saying he's trying to organize down. Ali Spagnola and Dual Court in his hotel room. I, I, and the funny thing is, I kind of feel like that could half be booked. <laughs> uh, I would kind of believe it, and it would be pretty epic. I'm not going to lie. Uh, Although, oh, there's I don't a know schedule. If, like, I, I don't know. I kind of feel like an Ali Spag Dual Court thing is what we should book for Dragon Con. <laughs> uh, yeah. If we can. Yeah, let's see. I'm looking for that. Oh, look at this. Here we go. We got uh, you ready to have all of Nerdtacular spoiled for you because uh, here is the the schedule. What? Lunch break. Whoa, <laughs> lunch I break. No now we know. A check in. A producer's what? panel. Oh my God! Somebody rise the dragon at three to four. <laughs> a live well, film. And the other thing is, there's a whole game room. I'm reading the schedule on my video feed. <laughs> Now, there's also a podcasting area where uh, Justin and I will be doing the FSL Tonight All-Star Game. Uh, that's not on the the main stage schedule. He's He's got multiple stages going on now. No, we got that. And late at night, there will be what will, I guess, is theoretically the follow-up to the current number one billboard best-selling 
comedy album, uh, Brian and Justin, but I am, I am calling without Brian's permission. Sure. Brian and Justin live from Utah. That that's, that's good by me. That's, uh, in fact, that's more creative than I would have been. <laughs> it would have uh, been. My title would have been Brian Brustrin and Justin Robert Young holding microphones on a stage while other people watch them and talk about some funny stuff. And by the way, I don't even look at it like that. I, I am fully expecting this to be in a hotel room and we're going to cram as many people into one of our hotel rooms as possible. Uh, I don't know where it's going to be, but I know it is going to happen. And I'll tell you what, I will, I will put this out there. Uh, I want to see, because I want it to be based on the the Mel Brooks Carl Rhino two thousand year old man which which you admitted you've been just plowing through all of the box sets experiencing all of that I'm obsessed with it. it it's the it's like Mel Brooks if he was not already my idol he is like now a life model for me but uh, I want to hear from you Mazel guys tov. what uh, what characters that we've done that you would like to hear interviewed by the other one. Oh my God. Yeah. We have like a, we should have a menu that they have, or, or maybe somebody can make a wheel of, of characters we've ever done in the history of NSFW. Spin that thing. I like, would Whoa. like to hear more of, cause I'd like to mix some old characters. Maybe we have, we come with some new stuff, but it's going to be an interview format. Either me or Brian will be interviewing the other one where the other one is in character. So let us know what you would like to hear because it is coming. This summer at Nerdtacular, Brian and Justin live from Utah. Dukakish and Bush. I'm just afternoon attack. Afternoon, yes, a reasonable hour attack. <laughs> Reasonably well, early enough saying, to be able uh, to get away for a nice dinner attack. There you go. Un undead Postini, uh, Buttimus Wind. <laughs> yeah, Daphne Games. By the way, just uh, tweeted Harry Potter eight. Uh, oh my God. This is let me let me check in on this. What I love is uh is uh somebody what some of the chat realm is asking, wait, is this real? Are you guys playing with my heart? And then uh and then the response was, of course it's real. Patricia Harkins Bradley tweeted it. Right? I love what 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 was Fight Club awesome secret society nonsense we have going? <laughs> <laughs> Don't spoil anything about Fight Club. I'm really enjoying seeing some of this break out to uh <laughs> <laughs> to, I love seeing it break out of our circle. It's, exactly. It's like all old, old Game On correspondent Daphne, who says, wow, really? Harry Potter 8? Woohoo! <laughs> it's amazing. 8-Bit Ocarina says, do we really need a new one? I'll watch it, I guess. See, that's 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 the second level stuff there, where yeah. you're just like, Ugh, I guess, whatever. It's, <laughs> it's, like, it's like, not only is it true, but it's boring and annoying to you now. Yeah. Like, Look at oh. this. Uh, yes Men says, hey, Kevin Pereira and Alex Albrecht, any thoughts about the Harry Potter 8 news? <laughs> Hashtag pointless. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, hey, let's, let's take a moment and thank our, uh, our other sponsor. Uh, Brian, we can't possibly have three sponsors. Oh, yes, we do. Triple complete sponsors. We're so chock full of sponsors that it's like we got to walk funny or else well, and we got to kind of squeeze our cheeks. Why don't you go else... ahead and give me another voice? <laughs> Who are you sleeping with to get three sponsors? That's amazing. Uh, Yes. the vo this for this for Ashley Paramore. I would like <laughs> you to. That's not true. She's a platonic friend and we all know it. I would like you to do this one in the voice of Tom Merritt. <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was beautiful pay dirt. When it's like, when, <laughs> that was like a little checkmate right there. <laughs> and it's like he couldn't Boy, even <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what. Give us, let's do, um, let's do a, uh, uh, what about, well, we, you already did kind of a Russian thing. Um, so not President Dukakish. Sinatra. Sinatra. There it is. That's the one. This episode of NSFW is brought to you by Shutterstock.com. Brian? Yes, sir. What do you know about Shutterstock, dummy? Oh, my God. I know that they got 900,000 video clips for starters, all shot by professionals from all over the Shut world. Shut up. It ain't amateur hour. Shutterstock.com. <laughs> You'll find the perfect image or video for your next creative project. Yeah, but Whether it's for your website, publication, or advertisement of video, or any other type of project, you can choose from over 900,000 high-quality stock video clips, 2D, 
3D animation, and motion graphics. They have clips in a variety of digital formats, most come in HD. You hear that, Brushwood? Yeah, no, well, HD is what you need, because if you want to have a high-quality production, you got to have quality. Hey, co- Junior, I'm doing an ad read here. Shutterstock <laughs> sources video clips from all around the world. Puts them at your fingertips. Many contributors to Shutterstock are professional filmmakers and animators. Shutterstock reviews every video individually for content and quality before adding it to its library. Shutterstock also adds 10,000 video clips a week, so each and every time you visit, you'll find something new. How does that grab you? No, no, okay, what, what happens if I use code NSFW5 at checkout? I'll tell you what happens when you use NSFW5 at checkout. No credit card needed. Start an account, begin using Shutterstock, and help imagine what your next product would be like. Save video selections, and you find it in your clip box. Once you decide to purchase, use offer code NSFW5 early, Eddie. And then new accounts will receive 30% off any package. That's Shutterstock.com. And for 30% off new accounts, use offer code NSFW5. Yeah. That was that was very well done, sir. Now get you back in the Sinatra? coffin. You're you're dead. <laughs> now get back in your grave. That's right. The Let's... summer wind came blowing in when Harry Potter 8 was announced. You know what you could do also is you could just ask, like, man, are these rumors? These Harry Potter 8 rumors? What? We apparently got Timothy Allen. <laughs> feel, feel right. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Timmy. <laughs> or did we? Oh, man. We should uh, we, uh, we should apologize. Oh, uh, man. Holotape is saying Harry Potter 8 will be in HFR 48 frames per second, which right. I don't know how I feel about that after The Hobbit. <laughs> well, yeah, you, you didn't like the HFR at all? I actually love the HFR. I'm just I'm just quoting from Hollow Tape. And I don't understand why is the Vizier from Aladdin so popular that everyone keeps shouting Hey Jafar? What? No, just, HFR sounds like Hey Jafar, and that's just what <laughs> popped in my mind. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love, the, I, love the fact, I love the fact that you're trying to make that into something like besides a really bad pun. And it's just like the brain was like, does not compute. <laughs> and the comedy center went, boy, ob. Boy, ob. Boy, ob. Uh, yeah. What, is there anything? Okay, can we talk about the, uh, the movie draft? You, you want to do the movie draft a minute and then we can talk, about, talk some smack about it? Uh, sure. What do, what do you got to say about it? Well, how are you feeling? Because Brian... You got a big opening from from Iron Man, well, but I talked to you on the phone and you weren't exactly crowing. That's that's quite a tease. Let's let's hear from our correspondent on the movie draft minute. Movie draft minute for the week of May sixth, twenty thirteen. I'm your host Roberto Viegas. It's only week three, and we already have a crazy opening weekend. Who came out on top? Let's go check out the rankings. Tom Merritt, Sarah Lane, Justin Robert Young, and C. Robert Cargill are all tied for third place. Still waiting for their first film. Scott Johnson's in second place with $33.8 million. And in first place with Iron Man 3 bringing in a whopping $174.1 million this week, bringing his total to $249.9 million. It's Brian Brushwood. And that is your Movie Draft Minute for the week of May 6th, 2013. So, right, hold on, hold on, hold on. before we get into any of the Movie Draft Minute, yeah, sure. let's say something about the man who does those Movie Draft Minutes. Vincent 404, Roberto Villegas. This dude. And Blender MF. Don't forget him. And Blender crazy. MF, of course. Who does, who does all the video stuff. Uh, Vincent 404 just did a huge uh, Indiegogo. Got a bunch of people to fund him for uh, a, a whole slate of other podcasts that he's doing. I think everybody should go check out. I mean, if you're in the chat room right now, uh, throw me the link to where you can find everything that he's doing. But he's doing some great stuff. He is an up and coming podcaster that in the next two years will be doing the kinds of shows that everybody is going to want to listen to as he uh, continues to just build an audience. Uh, he's doing great stuff now. All it's about be stuff us. That your friends are telling you about in two years. Yeah, no, and this and this is the kind of thing like he's got that he's got that fire uh, to create tons and tons of content. Who's uh, cosmicradio.tv. That's the URL that we're looking for right nice. now. Cosmicradio.tv. This is the second year he's been doing the movie draft, or I guess the third year he's been doing the movie draft minute. Uh, and all of us, he don't ask us for nothing. He don't ask us for money when we were doing getting everything ready for. Um, 
uh, for uh, the scam stuff when we were sending out scam packs. He showed up at my house just asking if he could lend a hand to assemble this stuff for us. Didn't nice. ask for nothing in return. Uh, he is amazing. Vince, at Vincent404, if you're following him on, on uh, Twitter, and Cosmic Radio TV is the project that he's working on. I Cosmic Radio so. TV. Yeah. Now let's talk about this uh, this movie draft. Obviously, the three of us are all involved in it. Brian, this is the first big domino that you wanted to fall. Did it fall exactly how you wanted it? It. Uh, uh, yes and no. I mean, here's the thing. First of all, you can't. Yeah. What 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 it was like last year? The biggest surprise ever, biggest op- opening ever, one of the biggest movies ever was was the Avengers. And yeah, what 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 happened to the person who bought the Avengers last year? Uh, they were smoking my tailpipe. But th- yeah, they lost. They lost. Yeah. So having the best movie doesn't necessarily get you there. It's a matter of how much you spend. So so the fact that I was already like an I don't know sixty eighty million dollar handicapped with um uh with Oblivion meant if this thing didn't blow it out of the water, I was flat out hose. There was no hope or whatever. So we were hearing. Some talk about as high as two hundred million globally. It was outpacing the Avengers, so I thought that you know yeah, maybe tracking wise and yeah. tracking is basically that surveys that movie studios do uh, to people to see like, hey, have you heard about Iron Man three? Basically, it's just people who know about Iron Man three and then are listed as saying that they favorably think about it or they are definitely going to go see it opening weekend. And in those surveys, it was doing better than what the Avengers was doing at the similar period of time. Right, right. And so with all that in mind, and you know, they, they were tracking anywhere from 160 to to 180 million. Uh, it ended up on the higher end of that, but like 174, because here's what happens. You got opening weekend, and then usually that's about the first, what, 30 to 40 percent of, uh, or maybe even up to 50 percent of anything you're going to get, depending on how fast it drops off. Luckily, I didn't, it doesn't look like there's too much uh, action movies coming up next week so hopefully i get at least two weeks of running start before star trek but weirdly even though this thing completely rocked it and did so well really all it did was keep me in the game and then at this same time that this happens you know the new uh man of steel trailer comes out like what did you pay for man of steel justin 36 36 36? like at this moment i totally I totally think that there, there's going to be two movies you remember from from this summer. It's going to be Iron Man three and Man of Steel. I think I, Iron Man three may get as high as as like four eighty or barely kiss five hundred million. Uh, and I think that um, uh, Man of Steel is going to. But, but do you think Man of Steel is going to do money, or it is going to be a thing that we remember? Good point. I mean, I, I I think it's going to make money. I think it's going to make good money because uh, it's the only other superhero thing we got. Uh, but Pacific Rim is also going to make money. No, it will not. No, I'm going under on Pacific Rim. Yeah, I I I like. Cargill's got Pacific Rim. Yes, he also had. Cargill, Green, Green he's Lantern. got the summer laughs. Pacific Rim is getting all kinds of marketing and not not their spending on it ways. I'd watch that. Uh, it's got geek cred. But so is everything else that Guillermo del Toro has done. And he's like him and Edgar Wright, man. Like they, they get nothing but geek cred, nothing but Comic-Con love, nothing but Twitter love, and nothing but crickets at the box office. And you know what else got a, got a trailer before Iron Man was White House Down? Oh, now, yeah. That's not going to make big bank. Now, wait a minute. Hold on. I only saw one trailer. That was We didn't talk about this on frame rate. When I went to, to the draft house, there was only one trailer before it, and it was for Thor, and then they went straight into the movie. And uh, I'm surprised to hear. Th- did you only see one trailer? No, we saw Thor, White House Down, and one other. Okay. Yeah. I, I saw the Star Trek. Um, uh, I think you're right. I think it was Into Darkness. Yeah, I saw Star Trek, Thor, and then I can't remember what the third one was, but it wasn't White House Down. So what do you think that uh, what do you think um, Star Trek is going to do? Oh, oh, you mean the movie that J.J. Abrams did before Star Wars? <laughs> we should talk about that, too, because it's like that's it's like every interview he's doing right now is like, uh, hey, man, what's it like to be doing Star Wars? And you're like, you, you don't want to talk about the, you know, me helming the franchise. Eh, well, we'll get to it. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, but- yeah. No, we'll talk about your movie. But, but like this is a bigger movie than the other two. There, there, or the other one, and and is is going to really make you know, waves. If you like Star Trek, I think is really going to blow. But up. But that's just a press thing. I, do you think that's seeping into the public consciousness? 
Uh, um, I mean, like, I, I feel like the press is what alerts people to the fact that this is here and we should be excited about it. No, I know, but I'm not seeing a lack of talk about Star Trek Into Darkness. I am. Really? I feel like we would be talking about this way more. I mean, listen, this is a huge sequel to a massively successful movie in the line of a huge franchise. This Believe should me, be I read IO9 big. and BBC, so I, I, I do not have a sense of the cultural temperature of anything. I shouldn't be. But I, I feel like there's a lot of talk of Star Trek Into Darkness. I don't know. I mean, outside right. the geek sphere. I mean, like, listen, like, uh, and Brian's I tend right, to look like, at you to know what actually the populace might be thinking, Justin. So I'll... <laughs> Yeah, you're the you're the one normie here. You're like you're you're like Jane Goodall. You you go out there and you like become I make my one way of them for and a while. I, I like I like act. I I dress as them. I rub yeah, you in cover their yourself stink in their and scent I make my way. They don't reject you. You sit over there taking notes and you come back. You scurry back to us <laughs> reporting. They're like they're like the baseballs. Exactly. <laughs> Hello, friend. I thought Mike Shanahan shouldn't have played Robert Griffin III in that playoff game. Oh, anyway, what, what do you think about Pacific Rim? <laughs> Never heard of it. Uh, okay, so here's My what... My little brother has been talking nothing but the Star Treks. I thought the first one was fine, and Zoe Zaldana's boobs look great. So, just give us a number. Let's, you guys bark out numbers. The Great Gatsby, what's it going to do? Sixty four dollars. Real, all right. Uh, Star Trek Into Darkness. It's gonna do two. It's gonna do two eighty. All told, no, it'll do more than two. It's gonna do two eighty. If it does two, then Scott should literally. No, I said hang, north so. of two, which is not actually numbers. Don't have cardinal points of the compass. I understand, but I just meant it'll it'll be somewhere above two hundred. But I don't think it'll get to. Ah, it should get to three hundred actually. I yeah, get better. I'm Are saying, you kidding? It, I'm saying 280. That's my call. Uh, Epic is Justin's first movie, and that comes out on. Uh, uh, oh, you do? I have, I have two movies. This is the most risky strategy uh, I've ever taken, and that is to take Epic and Fast and the Furious on the same weekend, hoping. It that, all depends uh, on how much you pay for them, right? Well, he paid 15 and 36, so so total that's 51. dollars That's half uh, his money. I, I, I only have four movies. I need them all to hit. I half of your money is in one weekend. Fun. That's yeah, that would make me nervous too. Uh, I, yeah, no, I, I think, I think you got a good chance. It, it's because you're hitting two def, diff, different demographics, but I'm surprised that like by your numbers, Fast and Furious 6 is going to make twice as much money as Epic. And I don't necessarily see that. Oh yeah. I, th I see that. Oh yeah. Yeah. What, what's Epic like going to do then? What do you think? I think Fast and Furious makes like 180, 190. And then Epic? Epic makes 80. Uh, oh no. Fast and Furious is going to do way more than that. Fast and Furious yeah. is fine. Well, you may, okay, I may be under, un, underplaying it. Yeah, Fast Five was a big buy for me. That's what that's what kept I, me. I, from... I would totally buy that. It will do more than that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Look, I actually don't estimate dollar amounts when I do my draft strategy. I estimate proportionality. Oh, of the of the total pie. I, I just I, I come I come up with a rating for each one and then I'm like dollar per dollar spent for that rating. But I, as long as the proportionality is correct, I don't care what the actual dollar amount is going to be. That's why I don't really have a good sense for that. Hmm. Uh, all right. Well, let's. I, I don't want to go so through the whole. So fast five domestic anymore. gross was two hundred million. Yeah. So six will get around that. Yeah. I mean, you. I, I think you could make the argument, and I certainly hope that it is north of fast five. Yeah, you could make the argument. I don't think it's guaranteed, though. It could it could be under. Man. I mean, people love The Rock. Yeah, no, I, I think it'll be close, no matter what. How are you it feeling? Eighty six opening weekend, and I would hope that. I mean, cause that's the thing is also you have to adjust for inflation. Well, and plus also you have the three yeah, D has not gone away, and instead has become more pervasive, and more more theaters are realizing, hey. If we like only offer a few 2D showings, then people will shrug and be like, all right, fine, and they'll go to the 3D showings. That's why I watched Iron Man in 3D because I didn't want to bother to go at the times that happen to have 2D. So you start inflating all your numbers. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, can we start talking about some of the disappointments of the draft? Because yeah. when we do the draft, it's all pie in the sky. We're all like, oh, man, everyone's got such a great slate of movies. Yeah. Everything looks fantastic. Yeah. But we, we can start to sort out the lemons. Oblivion, Brian, uh, lemon. Lemon. Total lemon. I, I bought it thinking 140 to 160, and it's at 76 right now. Uh, luckily, 
Well, no, there's no two ways about it. It's a lemon. <laughs> 5.4 million per dollar spent, though, is actually better than I thought you would get a return. Uh, paying 14. Well, well, I have that going for me. Yeah. Um, and pain and gain. Woo! Woo! Now, Woo! that's a sticker. Yeah. Especially at 20 bucks. 34 million, and he spent that 20 bucks for too. it. People, people thought they saw Michael Bay, and they thought that it had robots punching each other. Yeah, I, uh, I actually was very sad about Oblivion until P- Pain and Gain. Like, that sort of redefines. Like, I don't know, is is Oblivion a lemon? <laughs> if if Pain and Gain... Uh, I actually don't think so. I mean, like, I thought, like, you paid a decent amount for it, but it wasn't crazy, and it's going to get you $100 million, and you need That's what I mean. You, paid, you only paid $14 movie. for $76 million. That's, I mean, that's not a bargain by any stretch, but it's not far off. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, now, Pain and Gain, I mean, Scott's dead in the water. What else? What else do we got on here besides? Because uh, well, Star got... Trek, Lone Ranger, and Red Two. Oh, Lone Ranger was the other trailer I saw. Uh, was oh, it any good? Me too. Uh, also, uh, the um, movie that J.J. Abrams does before Star Wars <laughs> is not going to do the kind of money that people think it is. Lone Ranger is going to be a black hole. It will actually take money from Scott. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that that might be true. I I I think you're way too down on Star Trek Into Darkness, though. Well, I think it does. Do you have mean the chance. movie that J.J. Abrams did before Star Wars? Yes, no, that's the one. The movie that J.J. Okay, the high. Because I, 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 I'm not familiar with that. <laughs> uh man, I I just don't even know. Okay, Man of Steel. What num- what amount is it going to do? I, I to be honest, I still don't know. Like I I, I said, say a I, number. I, Come on, man, say if, a number. If it did a hundred. I would not be surprised if it did 500. I would not be surprised. Right. I still don't know where to put it. But but what what is the number? Say a number. Say a number. 220. 220? I'm going to say 280. Three. I said 320. 320. I'll say 280 still. No, yeah, I, 290. I, to win, I needed to be north of Tom. Of of higher than 320. I needed to be plus 320. He, yeah. means, he needs it to be in Canadian dollars, north of mine. <laughs> there you go. No U.S. dollars. That needs to be the one. Uh, okay, now what about personally? Which of these are you most excited about? I'm excited about Star Trek Into Darkness, frankly. I'm very excited about Man of Steel. Uh, and that's about... I mean, I, I'm excited. I'm mildly excited about a lot of the others, but Iron Man 3, Man of Steel, and Star Trek were the big ones for me. Hey, Justin, guess who Guess who was underwhelmed by Iron Man 3? Said it wasn't as good as Iron Man 2. Um, some a retarded friend of yours. <laughs> yes, he has two thumbs too. <laughs> this, this guy, I'm pointing to the guy in the middle between us. Oh, sorry, because I don't have video. I can't <laughs> see what you're pointing to. Uh, yeah, man, I thought he was crazy. Tommy, you didn't like it? No, I loved it. I, 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 I said this is what I said. It wasn't my favorite of the three. Right. But it was damn close because they're all three really good, and I loved it. No, but but hold on. So then, but, but that statement is not offensive. What is offensive is the implication that you think that two is good. He, I, he, I enjoyed two. I loved two. I thought two was great. Mm. Mm. Yeah, this, yeah. that awkward moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Man, I mean, nice. I know it's no it's Harry nice Potter. That you have thoughts. <laughs> you appear to be a sentient being walking on his own. I mean, I don't know. Why well, do you guys I, hate I two? I, very, that's what I don't understand. Uh, yeah, I specific yeah. feelings about, like, I, I thought that two kind of fell crushed, was crushed under the weight of, like, the daddy issues plot and the Avengers stuff that, like, obviously, listen, paid off. We can all agree that the Avengers stuff wound up paying off in the longer term. But I thought it kind of suffocated the narrative of that particular movie. Uh, whereas Iron Man 3, I thought, like, only got better as the movie went along, as they introduced more elements to it and like what? it was if you if you like let me give you recommendation if you like iron man 3 and you have not seen kiss kiss bang bang go rent kiss kiss bang bang tonight it is worth your viewing that's, dollar yeah well, it, that's a very that's a very good recommendation and specifically Actually, what justin and i i haven't seen kiss kiss bang bang but what justin told me is that uh that it did very well what iron man 3 did very well which is take all the elements you expect from a third movie in a franchise put them in because yes you have to put them in uh and then but then put a twist on all of them that make it that make it you're know, like okay that is pretty awesome 
But I also feel like that's what they did with every Iron Man. You know, I, fe- I felt that way about Iron Man too, is they were putting twist on things from the sequel movie. <laughs> Obviously, you guys thought it was a piece of steaming crap, and you, you right. didn't bother. I, I saw. It I, I just saw the news. I just saw the news. You're talking about uh, uh, Princess Rizuki's tweet, the the yes. retweet. <laughs> <laughs> Princess Rizu- Rizuki. Wait a minute. The thing. Uh, Princess Rizuki uh, retweeted oh, the Inception button. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, I gotta fight it. It's in over here. Get ready for a spoiler. There we go. <laughs> now I gotta. Now I gotta figure out how to get into this. There we go. Uh, Princess Rizuki, uh, alleged girlfriend of OMG Chad, just heard the news from her trusted American source that uh, oh, and her background. Her background is. Is there is the Hogwarts <laughs> crest? <laughs> Amazing. And for for the record, Princess Rizuki is a female magician, right? Yes, no, very famous magician over over in Indonesia. She's like in super Indonesia, super who was very smitten by uh, OMG Chad the she, last she, time that she they found were out him there. rather dashing. She is. She's is, already got at replies. Ha! Huh? Is that for real? Oh, that's great. That's that's uh, delightful. And, and that's up in how Thailand. forest fire. <laughs> still, it's still a breaking story. Uh, as far as we know, it's real. Uh, or, you know, Patricia Harkins Bradley is the one who tweeted it. We can only assume that uh, she's got insider sauce. Hey, can we can we take a moment to talk about uh, uh, the thing that Cheeto tipped us off to? Yes. Oh God. Well, I mean, yes. Yeah. Do you want me? Do you want me to read the letter? Do something after this because we have to end end on a on a fun note yes but but, but we do need to, serious we though. do need, at least need to put word out on on this uh i'm gonna try to read his words unless you feel like you can uh no 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 read 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 what he wrote okay uh as you guys know you know one of the things on nsfw you know we're we are constantly um trying to capture lightning in the bottle and sometimes we get it sometimes we don't and sometimes it's hilarious and other times uh justin can't see the goddamn video uh, but in this case, we, we uh, you know, try from time to time to uh, help people out. Uh, and we don't want to be this constant nonstop like, and now also help this person, that person or whatever. Uh, but uh, uh, Cheeto wrote us and he said, uh, don't know if you've seen this floating around, but one of my best friends who goes online as Honey had her 20 something year old son pass away last week. She's a friend of mine, OMG Chad, T2T2, Demon5, Curly's and others in the Minecraft community. She was even one of the episodes on one of the episodes of OMG Craft. You were on Brian. She was the giggly one. Um, and for those of you who don't no, uh, OMG Craft is fantastic, and a lot of the folks who make NSFW Electric because of their active participation have made that show so good. Um, they, they they found her son and gives details on that. Uh, her daughter's 15th birthday was the day they found her son dead. Uh, the past couple of days, we've been trying to raise money for her to give her son a funeral. They're so low on money that they looked at getting a free cremation, but then they wouldn't let them keep the remains if they did the free cremation, uh, which is just heartbreaking. Um uh, Honey's one of the nicest people I know. The Minecraft community has loved on her and has done marathon live streams. We set up a website where people can donate as of writing this. We've raised uh, $3,500. Unfortunately, funerals can cost around $10,000 on average. Uh, like I mentioned before, it's been amazing to see the community come out and support her. Even one of the lead developers of Minecraft retweeted the website we made. Uh, this uh, uh, Oh, Colin from Whose Line uh, Is It Anyway did as well. Uh, the website is... Uh, helphoney.org that's h-o-n-n-e-y h-e-l-p h-o-n-n-e-y dot o-r-g uh, I can imagine nothing uh, more tragic or heartbreaking than being in this position uh, unless that thing is also not being able to uh, afford uh, a funeral um, if you got some bucks you know just just take a moment to imagine being there and uh, and, and, and do what you can I'll, I'll tell you what uh, go to help again h-e-l-p h-o-n-n-e-y dot org and uh, if you happen to be in that area where, where she is and you happen I mean who knows who we're talking to or who you know uh, but if there is somebody in or around that area within driving distance of that area that works for a funeral home or cremation service, how about you give them a call and let them know that this is a big situation that would make a lot of people, uh, you know, very, uh, very happy to see that this is done in the right way and, and would, you know, or just, I mean, that's, up. and if anything, that would play to the, you know, what we do on NSFW is is a lot like you mentioned Fight Club in that we're we got this network of we everybody knows somebody who's in some business somewhere that that can help you know and uh, and if we do have anyone in that community or know somebody who can at least if nothing else 
you know, for all we know, there's some secret handshake among, uh, uh, you know, morticians or whatever that uh, that could help out in this situation. And that would mean an awful lot. So go ahead. Again, one more time, the URL, H-E-L-P-H-O-N-N-E-Y dot O-R-G. Uh, listen, we are completely hoodwinking literally thousands of people into believing that the Harry Potter movie is coming out. Yes. Um, how about we go ahead and double down on a little good stuff with uh, help H O. We're, we're doing, and if you feel battle. guilty for uh, for <laughs> if you feel guilty for for hoodwinking poor Princess Rizuki on the other side of the planet, then you can buy an indulgence from us right now, <laughs> and we will tell you that you're just fine and you're do, and you're doing good work. Uh, absolutely, uh, I'm, Chad can let us know where uh, Honey is uh, is located. And maybe we'll be able to, because I think I'll tell you what, that might be the other way to go about it. Everybody kicking your money because they're going to need it to make sure everything happens. But if somebody, uh, I believe it's somewhere in the South, I believe it it might be one of the Carolinas. Um, If somebody knows somebody in or around that area, I think that might be another way to help out. So go ahead and check that out. I'll read it as soon as somebody tells me what the, uh, where, where she is. But uh, again, our extreme condolences to uh, to Honey, and that's the worst thing ever. But if you want to help her out, go ahead. H e l p h o n n e y dot o r g. Uh, all right. So, what are we going to talk about this cheerful before we wrap things up here? You got anything good? Any, anything yeah, good happen today? Next week, big episode number one: the beginning of the summer music series. Oh my God! Are we doing it again? We're doing it again, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I can make two announcements. Number one. Summer Music Series begins next week with Dale Chase. That is a I'll tell you what, core rapper. Dale if we're going to do it, we're starting it late enough that like let's let's be good about the Summer Music Series and let's look at the schedule and figure out who we can get and 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 let's all get excited and pre-book again because we can we can get people in the Petaluma Studios. Uh, now we finally have have Im- improved this studio here and we can get more people in there. I want to. We sort of half assed it last year. I'll tell you what, we got a big announcement, man. We got we got a big fish for this year. Go on. Marion Call live yeah. in Twit Studios nice. this summer on the Summer Music Series. Yeah, dude, we could get George Frob back on here. This is uh, it's good. It's been a couple of years. We can uh, we can really rock the Summer Music Series hardcore, which I'm very excited about. Maybe old, old John, John Smokey. Smokey. He's pretty uh, pissed though. Oh, by the way, Kansas area. If you're in the Kansas area for for the honey thing and happen to know somebody in that field, uh if if you have a lead then let us know, and we can kind of be the middleman on that. All right, Dale Chase next week. He is awesome, man. He works with Dual Core. Uh, he got turned on to us by by uh, Snubs, Shannon Morse. Hopefully she will be on uh, next week's episode. He performs live in studio, Marion Call. And we are looking, man, if you know somebody that is in or can get to the Bay Area, we would love to make the Summer Music Series and every week thing. We'll still do the Skype stuff when we can. But uh, again, the more we can have live, the better things are going to be. Yes, absolutely to that. Um, uh, uh, the the Robo Sis S. If we're ever going to get Pablo Moose to Petaluma, well, apparently they live in or around Petaluma. I so ran Petaluma. into them at the at the Acre Coffee Shop one day at the High oh, Grounds really? Coffee Shop. <laughs> the High Grounds Coffee Shop. Yeah, that's awesome. So literally, we just have to wait at Acre them. Coffee. For I'll tell you what. Enough. And that, eventually we'll run into them. That would be absolutely amazing if we could get uh, if we could get uh, Pomplamos. Uh, OMG Chad turned me on to them, and I've been in love with their stuff ever since. Uh, meanwhile, I, oh, I guess also Jason Hell has confirmed that he will play live on the summer music. Yes, that's great, dude. That's, oh, that's fantastic. fantastic. Okay, this is going to be great. I'm excited about this summer, man. Uh, look, as we wrap up, uh, Tom, do you got anything you want to you want to promote? Uh, of course, tech news today. Don't forget about it. Twit.tv slash TNT, the number one tech news show on the internet. Come watch live if you want at 10 a.m. Pacific or just download it when you damn well please. But it's every day, so you know, don't wait too long. To download. Yeah, Justin Robert Young. What's, what are you up to, my man? Download tech news today, specifically tomorrow when I'll be on it. So go ahead and check it out again. Let me say this. Tech news today is the best podcast on the internet if i could only listen to one podcast i would listen to tech news today uh other than that justin robert young or right justin on. young on twitter uh yes and i say uh, uh do me a favor buy an indulgence if you plan to watch and read oh. harry potter 8 one what? more thing what what also next week 
we have live in studio the man who is crafting Ruinum and our first taste of a bottle of Ruinum next Ooh. week on the show. Operation a bottle it. We can actually do a live taste testing. That's going to be amazing. And also, uh, the contract is at least half signed. <laughs> I did my part. You're the one who still needs to do your part. All right, guys, do me a favor. Die in a fire. O-N-S-L-W.